closer to home, uh, Jungkook. Uh, as per us, as per model and national, you also let the rates of corporate takeovers, yes. setting up many corporations. Yes. Uh, can you sh share some of your experiences <laughs> and perhaps some of the criticisms that you feel that sting you? Yeah, I didn't have much. I didn't have much experience. I used the British and used the British rule to do what the British have been doing to us. And I used the British money, the uh, banks, the banks gave us the loan. And I used the British uh, Merchant Bank, the Rothschilds, to do all the work for us. Uh, I was hardly in London, I was here. And I go back only to do the final negotiation and, uh, and, and just uh, seal the deal, that's all. When uh, I look at the numbers, it looks very good and uh, looks like it's very profitable according to the projections uh, presented. And I, I just nodded my head and it's done, that's all. So we took over quite a number of companies, London Tin uh, to begin with, Saim Dhabi, uh, Harrison Crossfield uh, and uh, lastly uh, Guthrie they were all there for the taking actually because uh, the prices were cheap and uh, the realizable value uh, the market value was not uh, was not uh, was not done by the existing uh, uh, operators or, or directors so, with the advice of the merchant banks in London, uh, it, it, it was an eye-opener for us. I said, why not we go for it? And uh, with the kind of financing deals that was offered, it was a lucrative uh, takeover. And I was lucky also because I had good relationship with the Kuwaitis. The Kuwaitis uh, were very kind to us and were ever helpful. And uh, whatever loans I wanted were readily available at the market rate, of course. Uh, but they were made available to us uh, uh, with with no collateral. It's purely it's purely uh, out of their trust for for our country. And uh, that's how we did the deals on London Tin. We did the deals on some of the uh, plantation companies. Uh, which, if we didn't take them, according to Rothschild, would have been taken over by others. So we moved in and, and took them. And the other one was uh, a company that uh, that that uh, was owned by the Balus. By the Balus, of course, the Balus never liked me for this. Uh, I knew them very well, <laughs> but uh, it was so cheap, so. We took them, <laughs> and uh, I I walk into uh, Thomas Ballou's office one day, and uh, and of course I I knock on his door and open the door. Oh, he say, "Oh, Tunku, nice to see you." I said, "Nice to see you, Tom." <laughs> so I asked him very crudely. I said, "Well, are you going to move out of this office?" <laughs> <laughs> So he said, what's happening? I said, I've just taken over your company. <laughs> he didn't realize it. Because they were all old people. They, they, they had no clue as to what ha was happening on the market, actually. And, uh, and we moved in and, and took the highlands and lowlands. Yep. But Good we, didn't, we didn't have enough money. We came back. I came back. So... Uh, I didn't want to borrow too much money. So what I did was I, I rang up Lee Loise, good friend of mine, the late Tan Sri Lee Loise. I said, Loise, why don't you take uh, the bulk of the shares that I've just acquired in London? He said, uh, let me see the figures, he said. So I went to see Lee Loise and told him, I said, this is a very good property, I said, because uh, the property straddles along the highway, you know, right to Pok Klang. That's a good potential for real estate. So he said, okay, I'll take 50% uh, of it. I said, no, you take 70% of it. <laughs> I'll take 30% of it. So that's how the deal was struck. And uh, with that 70% that Loisen gave me, 
I paid the banks. <laughs> and we got the 30% for free. <laughs> so, so you were one of the early vulture funds then. Yeah. Uh, would, would you say that? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Trade. I don't know, but, but I, I just moved in at the right time, you know, because London Tin, London Tin was taken over because it was in a turmoil. Uh, you remember Slater Walker? Any of you knew Slater Walker? He was here gobbling up all the companies, including Hopa and all that. And, um, and he was also uh, coming to invite me to join, to join him in his uh, uh, takeover spree, which I didn't. But I said, I'm only interested in Malaysian uh, domicile companies. I'm not interested in foreign companies. So he had in his table London Tin Chess, uh, as well as in that stable, Island and Peninsula uh, belonging to Banhin Lee Bank. Oh. Banhin Lee Bank. Yap family. Yeah, the Yap family of Penang. Yeah, yes, so uh, I said I'm only interested in Malaysian companies. So he walked away and uh, I dealt with his uh, junior partners and uh, we we uh, bought the London Tin shares of of him, and also uh, we uh, now let get, let me get it right. Yes, we also bought uh, the Hopa shares of him, and that's when I got into trouble with the Singapore Authority. Uh, but fortunately, Hans we send the. Uh, the late Minister of Finance of Singapore was also a good friend of mine. I rang him up, I said, uh, I had no intention of owning Hopa. I'm, I'm prepared to let the Singapore Authority uh, nominate anybody to take over of me, the Hopa, because I'm only interested in the land tin, because we want to restructure the tin industry here. So, because uh, at that time, uh, team prices were moving up so high and uh, so uh, Hans Wissen agreed, he said okay we will dominate Michael Farm to look into this and, and see whether or not the Hopa family would take them back and uh, that, was, that was the deal, okay. that was the deal. And so you had uh, four years of very exciting corporate maneuvers <laughs> And eventually, it landed you the job as the chairman of Petronas. No, no, no. There was there was something different. Yeah. There was something different because uh, uh, somebody was stealing money from the oil, oil from 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 the proceeds that the government should be getting. And uh, I discovered this, so I went to the government. I said, uh, "This is not on." millions of dollars were stolen and uh, he got the Auditor General to check. I went to the second Prime Minister, Tun Razak, got the Auditor General to check and indeed it was proven that uh, millions of dollars were stolen by somebody. I will mention who. And, uh, and I said, while well, you deal with that, I said, uh, we'll, we'll sort this out. So he said, why not you take over the, uh, this, the business of taking back the oil? That's when I was asked to start Petronas. So I didn't know what to do with it because uh, we were not given any money, you know. He's just given instruction, that's so all. <laughs> you take over the oil. I said, how do I take over the oil? I don't have anything, you know. I'm just a layman like you, you know. So anyway, uh, I went to Indonesia and saw, and saw Ibn Sutowo, who was the head of Pertamina. And I said, uh, can you give me some advice as to how to do this? But Ibn Sutowo told me that uh, uh, it was not a problem for him because the Indonesian government nationalized oil. I said, no, 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 that's not on my plate. We are not 
not supposed to nationalize because our government doesn't believe in nationalization since we practice free enterprise and uh, we do not want to nationalize anything so i said how do how do how do i i start about about taking over oil in malaysia if no store cannot give me an answer i came back and i said uh, why not we force these oil companies to come and talk to us because they refuse to even see me you know i rang them they won't even respond to my phone call i wrote to them they won't even reply to me i get the prime minister to write to them they don't even bother answering the prime minister's letter i said there you are I said, they are big boys, you know, it's not easy to talk to them. So what I did was to form, to uh, incorporate this company called Petronas. And uh, in that uh, memorandum, or the, in that memorandum of, of a session, I smuggled uh, a phrase from uh, what was in the, uh, what was in the, uh, which company now? Uh, which was, it was in the Straits Times. It was in the Straits Times which talks about management shares. Meaning, if I own one share, it's equivalent to 51% of the shares of the company. Now they will have to come and talk to me. So I smuggled that particular clause into the Petroleum Development Act which was passed by parliament and so it gives the force of law to the Malaysian authority to get the oil companies to come and talk to us so that's how it was done and finally all these oil people came and saw me of course they are not very happy I said uh, I'm not going to nationalize you uh, neither am I going to do UN but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to offer you a production sharing contract similar to the ones offered by Norway, by Indonesia, uh, on terms much more favorable than what uh, those two countries have offered the oil contractors. In return, you cancel the agreements that you had with, uh, with us. That was done during the British time. And the agreement that was signed between the Shell Company, for instance, with the British government was until there were moon and stars. Selagi ada bulan dan bintang, this oil belongs to them. I said, is that a fair agreement? You know? <laughs> so they didn't bother. They didn't bother to respond. I said, well, if you don't bother to respond to my request, then I'm afraid I have to use the force of law. That is to buy one share in your listed company and I'll own 51% of those shares and I'll kick you all out from the board. <laughs> and that's what I did. And they all came and talked to me and finally agreed to have production sharing contracts. I said, you pick your, your compartments uh, as much as you like those that you can work on relinquish them to us and uh, and uh, terms that are favorable uh, to you at the moment will be will be continued and uh, we will not do anything that will cause you a loss so they they agreed but they insisted that uh, if there's a rise in the price of oil anything above the existing price is for them to take i said no that is inflation it's nothing to do with with your investment of me if you put one dollar down you only tell me how many percent you you would you would make profit out of that if they say 20 percent then i'll give i'll give you one dollar 20 cents anything above that belongs to the country so they had no argument but then the, I had problems with Hussein On, the Prime Minister, uh, who became the Prime Minister at that time. And uh, Hussein On, they want to listen to me, you know. So 
he wanted to give this to the oil company. He's a very fair man, you know. But uh, we have argued so much with the oil companies, and he wanted to give back to the oil companies this more than 20 cents profit, uh, which is due to inflation, actually, due to price escalation in the world market. So at that time, I became Minister of Finance. So when Hussein wanted to do that, I had no recourse, I had no choice but to agree with him. But what I did was, uh, I slapped an export duty on oil, which is much more than the inflation factor that they in. And, and the oil companies scream. And uh, of course I was called by the Prime Minister, what have you done? I said, I want to take my money back for the country. <laughs> I said, not for me. So Hussein said that you shouldn't do that. I said, you can have my letter of resignation if you don't, you're not happy with what I'm doing for the country. So he said, that will, won't be good for me, will it? I said, it's just too bad for you. I said. <laughs> so I got my way. And, uh, and, and eventually Mahade got rid of this, uh, this clause, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the export duty structure. And it's no longer imposed on the oil companies.